although I might have that, so anyway, uh, there's also an I Love You compilation, kind of appropriate, and um, a tribute to the Ramones, which so might be interesting. So you can get the idea, um, Stephen and Jennifer, the stakes are pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. Exit yeah, family fine, fortunes. Oh. So, fingers on the buzzers, just both go, wah, if you think you can answer this right, and then we, uh, the, the highest answer, or the top answer, gets the chance to play or pass. If you play, you've got to get all five answers, there are five answers, um, every wrong answer, you get a life, and I'll go, <laughs> and when you get three, when you lose three lifelines, then the other person can steal. It's as simple as that. If you've seen uh, the show Family Fortunes. No, this is a new, this is not based on anything I've ever seen ever <laughs> in my life. Okay, right. Okay, fingers on the buzzers. Okay. Name something. We asked eight of my mates, right? Something you associate with Carl Pilkington. Wow. Okay, Jennifer, <laughs> what? Silliness. Yeah, that's the top answer, thick or dimness. Do you want to play or pass? Play, please. Okay, okay. Stay, stay tuned, Stephen, because you might be able to steal if she gets three wrong. Okay. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Right, we've got a top answer, four to go. Thick or dimness is top answer, obviously. Okay, Jennifer, some other things associated with Carl. Comedy. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I don't even know who he is. Um... You uh, don't even know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> no, she does. She must and do. Yet, bizarrely, <laughs> she knows that silliness or yeah. stupidity is an answer. Yeah, come on, something else. Um, uh, smelly eyebrows. <laughs> 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 One more wrong answer, and then Stephen gets a chance to. Uh, I don't know. Um. People are screaming it at home. Very sensible. Oh, what, was that very sorry. sensible? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stephen, can you think of one of the answers that Jennifer didn't get? Uh, must be a, a mind for a name nonsense. Oh, well, uh, no, I'm going to give you that because number five is even thicker. So, <laughs> yeah, you, what you missed is, um, our top answer was thick or dim, second top answer was Manchester, third was rounded, fourth was airy Chinese kid, and five was um, even thicker. Um, so, I, I think Stephen's the winner there. Yeah, I think he's done well. Yeah. Uh, you enjoy uh, Rammstein and you get uh, the Stone Roses and an I Love You CD. So that's the, that's the pilot that's for this show, okay? When Blockbuster's all over, this we're gonna phase in mm. XF Family Fortunes. Carl, thoughts? It's not that good, is it? Why? It's not, it's not that good. Just... <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm not that happy with it. Why? Why? Yeah. Um, I'm just... What else? What, what, No. <laughs> You're definitely <laughs> right about that top answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, uh, right, um, so, uh, Stephen wins all those prizes. Yeah. And Stay on the line and we'll send, take your address. And we send some to Jennifer as well for even bothering to talk to Carl. Mm. So <laughs> what's this, Carl? What are you playing now? That bad the drawn boy. Yeah, excellent. Bye. Bye. Do you want to do rock busters then? Later. Eminem, sing for the moment on XFM 104.9, your ST merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, moving on. Got a lot to cram in. If you yawn again, or pick your teeth, or chew, uh, uh, oh, God. <laughs> uh, can I just, you know, sometimes I get told off by Carl, he gets a little bit sulky if I slag off the prizes that he sources for each competition. Uh, this is from Rob in Croydon, he's a former winner of Rockbusters. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't even know what the prizes were gonna be when he entered. Uh, he won, and sure enough, for one night only he was a hero. The following morning, uh, it was just Rob again, and all I had to show for my t triumph are five compilation CDs I'll never listen to. Yeah. And two DVDs I'll perhaps get nine pounds for on eBay. Please get some decent prizes. Ricky, you're BBC's golden child of comedy. What are you doing? How many of your listeners really are into Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince? No one. That's how many. Now that is a winner. That's someone who's got a reason to like us and oh, like you. I think he's got the same attitude as Steve when you give him something for free. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Sorted you out with NERD tickets for last night. A lot of messing around, a lot of phoning round yeah. going on to get your own tickets. Yeah. Come in today. You enjoy the gig. Couldn't be bothered going, yeah. Carl. Typical. Yeah. I didn't say I couldn't be bothered going, Carl. You just presume, presume, is assumed that that was the case. You're right, but well. the point is this, Carl. Once you've given me the tickets, they are mine to do with as I see fit. The thing is, what annoys me is right. I bet he hasn't even listened to them CDs. He might no, find something. No, on there. that's his point. I think. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> to be but, fair, but I don't want to give them stuff that's too good because then they'll listen to CDs instead of XFM. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's always careful planning. <laughs> ah! So you always got an answer. Yeah. Oh. 
Carl, you're my hero. We so, we don't care, do we, Carl? Well, I, I'm I, I'm I think the prizes are all right considering what they've got to do. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's just a bit of fun, for God's sake. <laughs> so, uh, please do not blaspheme on air. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, <laughs> the Shining. It's this more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video. Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight because it's one of those films that. Um, <laughs> so you're, you're going to watch this video <laughs> and then you're going to send it to someone as a prize. Yeah, it's one of those films. <laughs> that I've <laughs> You just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh yeah. You don't think like Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Jim has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still try to write the, uh, the book then? No? Yes. Good. Funny, someone, uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. I'll, I'll just show you, just... That's weird, isn't it? It's just, the typewriter being... You're not, you're not in the mood, are you? Just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again, like you get into when you're writing. You're not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, that was just, just being a bit funny, a bit offhand and that. <coughs> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. I've got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <coughs> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book. Do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it. You know. But... If you don't want to know, won't have to, don't bother doing it, but, do you know what I mean? It just, airy Chinese kid, it's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid cakes in it, but if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You won't have to touch any hair on his head, like I say, he's covered, leave the head alone if you want, touch his hands, he's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far, you haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much, just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still... Why don't you start right now and get out of here? Well, oh, you're gonna be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there, Carl Pilkington in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more <laughs> chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> <laughs> just for the head of it, and he he, was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, said, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary. There's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if I was trying to do that, that would be like being, I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> it, that's, that's more scary. The thing the is, you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In the thirty minutes between twelve thirty and one, the old bin lid on the head. If you want to do that again? Yeah. Uh, squeezing my head. Think he had a go at? 
and a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in thirty minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? Who <laughs> <laughs> can say that? Who else can say <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, uh, anyway, have we got a question then? Yeah, it's a weird copy of, I'm so embarrassed to say it, The Shining <laughs> on, VHS. on VHS is worth five ninety nine, <laughs> and it will have already been watched by Carl Pimpton, probably not even rewound. Yeah, to not win rewound, that. And a, a little bit of tripe and cow eels <laughs> where it just <laughs> slipped into his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a farm cake yeah. outside. As he was reading the back of the box trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the ingredients. Um, <laughs> to whip this, right? To whip- oh, Here's a question. I've got a question. Oh, no, go on. No, what, no, I want to hear Carl's first. Okay. No, it's about the film. Yeah. Um, because when I was whizzing through it, I saw something. I thought, oh, that's good. Um, the kid who's in it, um, he was writing something on the back of a door with lipstick. <laughs> what was it? Well, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. Nor can I. Oh, so the kid in it was writing Is something on the back of the door. Is that gonna be too hard for anyone? Let's see if- I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody. Right, the phones are going, so it might be. Yeah, but this is email, isn't it? All right, Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> what was being scrawled on the back of a door by the little kid in The Shining? Be honest, if you know that, it means you've probably already got it and you've watched it about eight times. Yeah, fair enough, though. All right, <laughs> Bob Dylan. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me lonesome when you go on XFM. Sorry, they're arguing. Steve and Carl. But are he just goes, you've got to keep about, it slick. You know, can I just tell them what you're arguing about? The, think of this, right? This is the argument. They're arguing whose fault it is why this show is rubbish. Think of that! What? What? That's a perfect. That, I think that's a valid criticism. At least we're discussing it. You're just accepting that that's the case. <laughs> you're not even trying to change it. <laughs> We're, uh, we're ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah, we have to I go should there. be. I should be, but uh, I, I quite like it. In fact, I remember. Remember when we went out about two weeks ago? Yeah. So we've, we've got to, you know, make it tight and that, make it good. <laughs> um, went out for something to eat. <laughs> you, you were happy, sat at the table talking about squids and having to, <laughs> you know, go off with one if you wanted to have a kid. <laughs> I brought up the topic. Right, what we're going to do about the show? Suddenly, you've got to go. It's like, oh, I think I've, I've made plans. <laughs> Me and Steve sat there. Can I just do no, <laughs> See, I do that. I, I, I do, I do acknowledge, um, uh, quite, quite shamefully that this is more enjoyable for me to do than for you to listen to but it's like it's like two hours sort of play time for me it's like um you know the study period when you're meant to read a book but you actually can't afford to run around and draw pictures <laughs> i think like this even though i'm getting paid for this and i'm meant to be working it's nice it's cool isn't it <laughs> not not for the listener but, but for me. But the problem is, the only way we can improve this show, Carl, to be honest, the only way we can make this good is if the three of us resign. Yeah. And they <laughs> replace it with someone else. Yeah, but Carl, you, you're getting flustered and you're getting stressed because you're, tr you know, I don't know what I was saying, answer the phones, you were letting them ring, you're still letting it ring. You're still letting people phone, you go, oh look, leave that. And uh, people have phoned in, good enough to phone in, to ask for something for free. <laughs> I think you should at least answer the phone and say, it's not worth it, the prizes are rubbish. Well, whilst I'm doing all the other stuff, maybe you can do that. No way. Right then. No but to be way. fair, Rick, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of being lazy, no. but you're sat on a chair and yet you're almost vertical. <laughs> yeah, no, I God. don't know how you've done it, it's like you're almost asleep, <laughs> but you're sat on an upright chair. I don't know how you've actually angled yourself I'm gonna have a bad back when I'm, oh, in old age, I'm just gonna be bent double. Right, so come on I now, what? pretend we're starting now. Okay. We've just started the show Yeah, now. it's two o'clock, it's right. XFM, um, it's the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, or our show, it's our show. From now on, I'm, I'm, I'm at least <laughs> <laughs> cutting up the blame as well. Um, XFM 104.9, what do you want to know? Funny thing happened to me on the, on the way here. <laughs> okay. Um, actually it was, uh, about Wednesday or Thursday, I was walking around, I was walking on Charing Cross Road, I was on my way here actually to meet Carl for a drink, and um, this little fella came up to me, I think it was uh, an overseas student, he's sort of like a student type but he had an accent, and uh, he came up to me and went, excuse me, are you the uh, one from the office? And I went, um, yeah, yeah, he went, um, would you sign a script book on the office for me? I went, uh, yep, by all means, yeah, he went, can you come to the bookshop? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what, what, you haven't got it on you? He went, no, but if you come, I will buy one for you to sign. And I went, I can't really. He went, <laughs> we're going to pass one. I went, I'm not, no, I'm, I can't. He went, and he went, as he went, Oh, I was just, I was just in Waterstones earlier, I didn't, I didn't go, I went, oh, sorry, he went, you could just, I went, I can't, he went, okay, 
I went, I'll, I'll sign something else. Have you got something else I can sign? He went, of course. <laughs> and I signed a pamphlet or a brochure or something <laughs> for him. But I love the idea, imagine me going with him, <laughs> I'm queuing up, and I'm in the queue, <laughs> he's going, uh, are you going? Yeah, fine, can you just, hurry up. And he gets there and his switch doesn't work and he goes, can you lend me ten pounds? <laughs> <Yeah>. I mean, <laughs> imagine that. I'm a little bit annoyed you didn't go with him, frankly, because that would have been a sale of our book and I get a little cut from that. Well, behind him was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> going, right. can, can we hurry up? Because yeah. I've really, I shouldn't be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> and uh, I really. I thought it was very odd the other day, we were walking along and Ricky often gets bothered for an autograph and um, some Japanese people who I think were tourists, oh, uh, they, they, they appeared from behind the corner and I thought, this is odd, that, you know, they seemed like tourists but they're obviously going to ask for an autograph <laughs> and they just handed him a camera and said, excuse me, would you take a photo of us? I was, I and they was didn't cracking recognize him. They didn't I, was recognize just, him. I was laughing, I was thinking, right. Oh, so okay. now Ricky's still in the street, people are recognizing him as he's taking a photo of three <laughs> complete Japanese, Japanese strangers <laughs> and I imagine them getting home and so it's saying, and here's the one we had taken by Ricky Gervais, taken with Ricky Gervais, no, taken by Ricky Gervais. From the office. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Uh, would you come to uh, the bookshop with me? The oh. life of a minor celebrity. Not really. <laughs> Times like these, Foo Fighters and XFM 104.9. Carl, oh. let's build up to monkey news. Do you want to give the, uh, the competition answer and winner? Yeah, uh, we did the bit on, on The Shining, me acting out in that. Yeah. And the question was, the kid in the film The Shining, yeah. he, uh, after like the devil had got in him and that. <laughs> uh, this isn't written out, is it? You're just winging this, aren't you? No, but I remember it. I but remember you haven't seen it. the film though, have you? No, but when I was whizzing through to get the clips to make that thing, right. I saw it and I thought, hang on a minute, I'll watch this bit. And yeah. that's why I want to take it home yeah. tonight and watch excited, it. Yeah. I meant more how you're presenting the competition, it's just like Jonathan Ross on film 2003. Well, I'm just, just saying, right, so the kid's there in the bedroom and yeah. he's, uh, he's got his mum's lipstick. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's saying... He doesn't it run a, a mobile deed? No. And he no. said, uh, he, he wrote down red rum yeah. on the back of the door. Uh -huh. And his mum wakes up and thinks, what's he doing? Yeah. She looks at him and she goes, oh. And then she looks in the mirror and sees red rum in the mirror. Right. Which she thinks sort of he's offering racing tips. He yeah. says murder in the oh, mirror. Oh, clever. So, uh, Kelly in Hounslow got that right. So Excellent. After I've watched the film, I'll be whizzing that. Oh, uh, brilliant. I, I, I mean, the one thing I do like about, um, this show, uh, for all its faults, is the... Honesty? Yeah. I mean, that can be good and bad. <laughs> I mean, it's... I mean, some people think it's, it's sloppy, arrogance, laziness, you know, They'd thoughtlessness. Be right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I like, I like to think it's honesty. It's like a peek into the, to the mind and workings of Carl Pilkington. He just said to me, cos he was shaking, cos he said to me, and the, I, I quote, he said, oh, He's just uh, uh, wittering to himself, I must remember to eat next time <laughs> Suzanne's away. I know. I know. I, I like must to remember to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did. I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about. <laughs> <laughs> because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So, I mean, for all I've eaten. A lot morning, of self abuse. Is that I what had, you're saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up, right? Why did you mess I it up? I it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> and she called up and said, have you eaten? And I went, yeah. She went, was it nice what you have? I said, lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, cos she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, well, I'm not, you know. And she went, okay, bye, bye. And I go, that car again, yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway, <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. And we had, uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast, that is all I've had. So I'm starving, I'm shaky. Plus I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on. <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired but my legs aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like Michael Flatley? You have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on, like, the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, it's weird. To get a decent night's sleep? I put it down to Smarties and that, it's like a sugar thing, but, yeah. um... Stop eating them. Apparently Bob Morton has got it, as well. well he's got arthritis. Has he? You told yeah. me the week that you've mastered, uh, moonwalking. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can do that. Is that one of the things you did in the middle of the night? It's it's, it's still moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He just just gets out, he finds himself walking backwards and wakes up and goes, oh God, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant at this. Right, so, so, listen, what we're doing now, are we doing, uh, are we getting a debate going about... Actually, right? Go on. We're struggling, go on. No, no. You can help me out here, Carl. You've got an idea. I can see it in your 